Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on UFT automation. In this video, we will look at function libraries. Uh, you might have heard about what a function library is uh, in some of the videos, but uh, this video will go in detail on what a function library is, how you can create it, and what it adds to your uh, test cases or you know UFT tests and you know how you go about you know writing these function libraries so we will look into all that in this uh, video okay let us uh, first start with uh, what a function library is a function library is nothing but a file with some code now you know what a function is we from the VB scripting background we know that a function is nothing but a group of VB statements um, same thing here as well you know it's a print nothing but VB function so it's a function library is nothing but a file with bunch of functions so first we will uh, you know get into you know cr in a process of creating a, a function library and then th we will look into different kind of file extensions and then we'll look at uh, or you know review a function library uh, like a very small and a basic function library and we'll we'll use it and then we'll see what how we can uh, add this particular concept into our testing so let us first create a function library uh, let's uh, let me remove this let's start blank so I have a, a base script here this primarily you know starts our Windows application you know sample application logs in makes a reservation and it will exit and if I click there okay that's what it does but for the sake of demonstration purposes I'm gonna uh, go to the exit function and I will you know let me delete that I'm going to start uh, writing some code here to demonstrate the function libraries. So number one is let's create a function library. File, new, and here you have an option called function library. When you click on that, you get a prompt to create a file. And you can see, you know, it's um, .qfl or .vbs or .txt. Even, you know, it could be txt. What I'll do is I will uh, go into... <coughs> here and I'll just save it in the temp uh, directory called function I'll call it library one and I'll call it give it a dot txt extension and now let's take a look at that file so we have file one dot txt we'll create another function library and we'll call it library two dot qfl so we have .kfl. We'll create another function library with a different extension. And this time, we will give .vbs. And we know that vbs is a VB script file extension. Create. So these are all function libraries. So a function library could have a .txt extension. I'm sorry, .txt extension, extension or you could have a .qfl extension, or you could have .vbs extension. Now, this is nothing but VB scripting. So you just write functions in there. So say, for example, in uh, library one, I write a function called function. You know, it autofills the third line there with, you know, ending function there. And I'll give it name, let's say, uh, uh, print my message. And uh, we'll say message text. And within the function, we will take that text and display it as a message. We'll say message, msg, message box, and we will display simple message box with message text. 
So whatever you pass pass it as an argument, that string gets displayed to you, and we are using message box to display the message. Let's see how we can use it. So we, we created uh, three sample function libraries: library one.txt, library two.kfl, and you know what? Library one.vbs. I meant it to be three, but that's fine, you know, because the extension is different, so it's going to be different. So it works based off of the extension. Let's say, or you know what, just to keep it simple and easy for you to understand, I'll go ahead and change the name here. I'll put dot, sorry, not dot, but you know, I'll give it a three there. So now I have these three. I can take this, drop it like that. It should bring the file. And in three, we have uh, this function. And once we, you know, Having library file is one thing, a function library, but you need to associate or link that function library to your test. And you can do that by right clicking here and say associate function library with 003 underscore fl. You can do that, and then you know you will see this function libraries folder, and then you'll see library 3. Now, after you do that, now this is linked to your test now you can go into your test I'll go to the very last action and here what I'll do is I want to use the function that's in here and what do we have here we have print my message there are a couple of ways to do it you can uh, do insert uh, which is F7 uh, step generator and on the categories type you can do functions instead of all you do library functions when you do that, it will display you all the functions that are available. Say, for example, if I go into this and copy this whole thing and put, let's say, 2, 2, 2 there just to differentiate the two. And now I can go in here and do F7 and do functions and do function uh, library functions then here I'll have two. I'll print my message and print my message two to two. So what I'm trying to show you here is that this screen, the step generator screen, will display all the functions that are associated with your test. I'll pick the first one. And here I'll, you know, that's the message text. This is nothing but, uh, I'll show you that's nothing but the argument that was defined with the function. I'll say hello world and you see this uh, you know this actual script that it is generating. I do OK it adds a line there. What I'll do is I'll just right click there and say run from step so it should run just from that step. The hello world. Now if you you know look at here we are just calling this function and passing this text as argument and this function if you right click here and say go to definition or control enter it takes you to the function where you know wherever it sits as long as it is within the uh, function library that is associated to this particular test and a couple of the things you know when you look at these uh, you know function libraries you, the, the drop down here will list all the functions that are within that file so it's that say if you have a huge file and if you have like huge functions and you know like a lot of functions and big functions so it would let you easily browse through the list i mean you can quickly list all the functions that are available and you can jump to whichever one that you like I many if you know why if it is small function then just couple it's kind of easy because that fits in your screen so it's kind of easy to work with but once it goes beyond one screen and have more number of functions this would help you so that's about how you create and the type of extensions and how you call it now let's uh, you know this our sample let me uh, remove all these and use a function library that I already have uh, it's called a function library 01 I'll drag and drop it there I mean you can also do a traditional way of you know opening a function library from here both will work 
and then I'll do right click here and say associate function library with 003 then it'll show up here now I can start using all this now what do we have here if you pull this drop down it says add Celsius divide multiply subtract which are simple mathematical functions so let us use a couple of functions here I go to exit of course this will not work because we don't have this function anymore we'll remove that and uh, I can do add and it says a comma b you know th that is it's displaying that intelligence because we have this here it's exactly that's what it's doing it's displaying that here so it knows that you need to pass uh, two numbers say 10 comma 30 so when you pass this here what does this do it returns the total if it is returning the total then we need to either do one of things either we can say sum equal to we can do that and then say print sum and we'll say message sum so here we are using the function getting the total as a return value put it sending it to sum and we are printing sum as an output and also displaying the message let's go ahead and run it so I got 30 that's from line 13 and also you can say add function output add function add function invoked that's coming from the actual function itself because we have a line there saying print and some text there so that's coming from there and then it's displaying uh, sorry yeah print sum that's displaying the sum here that the 30 is coming from line 12 so that's how you actually call uh, you can do interesting things uh, say for example instead of all these I could just say print add 10 comma 25 so whatever the return value is you're passing it to print that means it needs to print clear all that I'll just run from this step so we have 35 and that line is coming from the actual function so not just that you can also do things like this you can say instead of 10 you want to do add inside that and say 33 comma 29 so we are, going, we are going to we have an add we need to send a number but this number is a sum of another two numbers and we're using the same function again let's see if this works you know I'm gonna delete all that right click run from the strip Well, it worked, so it called the function twice. So, 23, uh, sorry, 33 plus 29 is 52, right? It's, uh, is it 52? It's actually 62. So, 33 plus 29 is 62, then 62 plus 25 is 87. So, it made a call here, that was the first call that was made, and then I mean originally it started adding here but it went inside it saw another function call and it made this call and then whatever the return value was it substituted there and then it made another call so that's what I mean I just wanted to show that you could do that as well so that's about uh, basics of uh, you know function libraries and uh, you know we'll look at uh, we'll have an, another video where we'll actually talk about how we can use this within our you know application testing okay i'll see you in the next video thank you